Hey, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we begin working on the hunting knife project and taking this piece of camphor barrel and shaping it up into a handle. In my last video, we finished up the guard for this hunting knife, which just did not make the cut. So I went back to the drawing board and I came up with this. So what do you think? Copper looks good, don't it? The block of camphor barrel that we have here has already been on the mill. It's been squared off and flattened. We already drilled out the hole for the tang in one of our previous videos. So today we're gonna take this, we're gonna hit it on the grinder and work up through the grits to a slack belt where we're gonna do our final smoothing and shaping. Now there's quite a few different ways to do a hidden tang. A lot of guys like to glue these up in place and shape them with the guard, which is one way to do it. Um, but with this one here, you see I have the jeweled piece of spacer here, so we can't exactly do that. We already shaped the guard, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna shape the handle separate, give it a little bit of a rounded edge to kind of give it that museum finish, and then glue it up, and then we'll pin it up. When you're working on hidden tangs, I like to mark out where my tang is gonna fit. That way when I'm shaping the handle, I don't grind in and hit where it's drilled out. You can see here, I gave a rough outline. What I like to do on my handles is I like to exaggerate the lines and I mean really exaggerate the lines because I find out when I take it to the grinder and I start shaping it, the lines and, and the curves kind of become muted over time. Maybe, maybe a pro tip here, exaggerate your lines grind to those marks and then see how it fits and then take a little bit off here and there to get a better a better feel for the handle so with that said let's take this over to the grinder and start hogging out some of this material so we're going to start with the use 36 grit ceramic belt to really take a bite and hog out the material quickly i don't like sitting here all day you know even even the 60 grit belts it takes a while but 36 grit bites right into it so you see here what it is, I marked out the spacer for fit up. That way I get a nice, close, tight fit matching the spacer material on the knife. So we're gonna take the eight inch wheel, and I have a mark here, and we're gonna line up, or try and match up with this line here as we grind. And it's gonna give us a little bit of an undercut. So we're back inside on my finishing station because I don't know how to monitor the battery on my camera. The handle's blocked out. I think it fits pretty well. It's a bit bulky at the moment, but we're gonna refine that as we go back out to the shop and hit it on the grinder. So a couple things I wanna point out before we head back out there. I went ahead and put a few more marks on the handle. So I'm gonna use this line here as a guide when I go to the eight inch wheel. I'm gonna use the circumference of the wheel to give me a little bit more of a, of a bevel in here. And that's where I'm gonna stop on this line. So I'm gonna match it up with the mark that I have here for the spacer and give me that concave grind. What I'm also going to do is I'm also gonna hollow out the tail end or the butt end of the handle here, which is gonna pinch it a little tighter. It's gonna fit real nicely in your hand. And once that's ground and that's finished up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and what I have here is a scribe that's used for checkering. With the scribe, I'm gonna mark out all four of my edges here on each side. 
when I mark it out, it's going to be based on how much material I have to take off on these edges, which you can tell by the circumference of the mark out for the spacer here. When it's marked out, what I'll do is I'll come back, I'll put this on the, on the grinder, I'm going to grind this edge in, and then when I go to the slack belt, it helps me keep a very symmetrical shape when I'm on the slack belt and shaping it. All right, we just finished squaring up the scribe lines we marked out on each edge. Those sun makers will jump right into a J-Flex belt and start roughening their shape. This added step that we did aids in maintaining the overall symmetry when we start rounding things off at the slack belt. You can see just how much the lines of the handle shape have changed just by squaring off the edges. As we round off the edge, you'll, you'll see some of the exaggerated features become more muted or smooth in definition. So this is a key reason why I mentioned early on to over exaggerate your profile lines. It's real easy to take away lines or their overall shape, but it, it can be a real challenge to add them if you don't have the base to work off of. So before I call it a day and return to the shop tomorrow, I want to point out the amount of material left over where the handle meets the spacer. Remember, we need this extra material to create our museum fit or finish, as this will be slightly rounded off where the two parts meet. It's the next day. I'm back out in the shop a little later than I wanted to be. So we're going to start working on this camper bro handle. What we're going to do is we're going to take it to the slack belt, it's a 320 grit J-Flex belt that's been ripped down to one inch wide. We're going to use that to round off all the hard edges, all the square edges on this handle, give it some nice defined shape. Let's get started. All right, so that went pretty quick. I know the video was sped up, but because we went and we ground those edges, all those corners, that 
process in itself is what helps expedite the rounding and shaping on the slack belt. It does go that quick. I wish it went as quick as it did in the, in the video, but it, it goes fairly quick. So let's see how this fits up. That looks pretty good. So we have a little bit of an edge here, which I still wanted. I wanted to keep that edge there. So what I am going to do is I'm gonna go back, probably off camera, cause it's a little bit tedious and, and boring, but I'm gonna go by hand and I'm just gonna round this edge to meet the spacer there. And uh, that's gonna give us our museum fit. And then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some true oil and we're going to run through the grits 220 right on up right on up the line to uh 2500 grit and then we're going to hit it on the polishing wheel and it should come out almost like glass so what i do do on some of my knives is i do like to round off the butt end of the handle but for this i kind of like i like the flat edge i think i'm going to keep that flat edge that nice hard line here because I like the way this hooks. So with that said, we're going to keep it flat. All right, we're back inside at my hand finishing station. What I got here is a piece of metal that I've shaped to be the size of a tang that I can insert my handle onto, and it holds a handle while I do the hand finishing. Um, some handles, if, if it's drilled out thicker than others, I just add a couple wraps of tape, and it holds it nice and tight. So the process here is we're going to take some Birchwood Casey, some true oil, and we're going to coat the handle with the true oil and then start sanding it in. We're going to start with a 220 grit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let that sit overnight. Then we're going to come back and we're going to start to steadily work through the grits. The whole process is basically, you know, step, rinse and repeat. So I'll show you the initial process with the 220 grit, how I use it, what I do to sand it. And then I'll probably show you bits and pieces of the process as we progress up to 2500 grit. What I like to do is I like to cut strips of sandpaper to like about a quarter inch rip. And I use that to go in and start working the handle. Now the first coating usually soaks in real well. And we want that to take place because we want that to harden up into the wood when we go and hit our higher grits. So there's the process. Step, rinse, repeat. We're gonna go right through the grits, do exactly that every time. True oil, sand it down, wipe it. Do all four sides, I usually do top, bottom, and then work the sides. We're gonna let this sit overnight, let this dry, harden up in the wood. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go off camera and I'm just gonna hit this on sandpaper on my granite flat, flat block and get this nice and flat. And I'll do the same thing. I'll put some true oil on this and let that sit overnight. It's the next day, we let this sit overnight. I've already gone ahead and worked up to a thousand grit. And we're gonna go from there and work up to 2,500 grit. You can see the colors are really coming out in this handle, the burls, the eyes, it's, it's coming out pretty nice. All right, that's about the last pass with the 2500 grit paper. You can see this is already taking on a shine. So what we gotta do is we gotta let this sit overnight for 24 hours, let the true oil harden up, and then we're gonna take it out to the buffer.
well, it's time for the big unveil. But first, hit that subscribe button now and ring the bell to see upcoming knife making, wood turning, and leather working videos. And if you enjoyed this content, hit the like button now. Let me know what you liked, didn't like, what you want to see in upcoming videos. Leave a comment, let me know. All right, here it is. What do you think? So in this series, you guys got to see how we did a convex edge, clip point, guard. You didn't get to see me make the new guard, but you got to see the old guard to give you an idea of how the guard making process works. Overall feel, the knight got great balance. I mean, it's nice. So in the next and last video of the series, we're gonna make a sheath for this honey knife where we're gonna carve it based on customer specs. And I'll show you some tips and tricks on how I do my carving and preparation for the sheath for this knife. So with that said, I'll see you in the next one.